What's going on guys, Aldo Stasio here with flightpath.com. Now, it's that time of year where it's snowing everywhere. I'm over here in Lake Tahoe, pretty much our annual family trip. So I'm just kind of gonna go through with you guys some of my experiences and also give you some tips on things to do and think about when you're out there flying in cold weather like this. But before we get into the video, a quick message from our sponsor, Storyblocks. And for those who aren't familiar with Storyblocks, Storyblocks is an online subscription membership plan that allows you to download over a million royalty-free digital assets. Storyblocks offers high-resolution photos as well as HD and 4K video downloads. And the biggest benefit of Storyblocks is that you get unlimited downloads with your subscription plan. And if you guys are familiar with my channel, you guys know I like to add some B-roll to my videos. It just adds a little bit more context and helps tell a better story. Now, luckily enough, I was able to bring my drone here to Lake Tahoe, but if I wasn't able to get any aerial footage, all you have to do is go over to Storyblocks, type in Lake Tahoe Aerial, and now you can see a bunch of royalty-free images and videos that you're able to download and now use in your video to help tell a better story. So if you want to bring your stories more to life and you don't want to sacrifice time, resources, and of course, budget, use my link down below to start a membership plan and get unlimited downloads with your subscription. And now, back to the video. Now for tip number one, the first thing you're gonna to want to do is look at the specifications on the drone you're flying. Some drones have a higher tolerance to cold weather as well as heat. So if you are flying in a place that's extremely cold, you know, negative, whatever it might be, or if you're flying in the desert, you're gonna run into some issues if your drone is not compatible with those temperatures. Now right now in Tahoe, it's about between 30 to 40 degrees. Uh, well within range of flying. However, you still have to be very careful when flying in cold weather or in hot places. I ran into some issues before when I was flying in the desert over in Palm Springs, getting too hot. So make sure you guys check the specifications of your drone to see if it's even compatible to fly in either really, really cold or really, really hot conditions. So I'm gonna walk you guys through my whole steps as getting up in the air. Next tip I'm gonna tell you guys is get some gloves. Now these are gloves that you can actually take the tips off of just like this. So you can actually touch the screen. Now there's a bunch of other gloves out there, of course, that allow you to just touch the screen. Now these gloves right here are from PGY Tech. I've talked about this before. So if you guys are interested in something like this, they, PGY Tech does all the drone manufacturing accessories. So uh, if you guys want information on these and anything else to talk about in the video, make sure to check the links down below. I'll leave all those things. But these are from PGY Tech. Cool little gloves that allow you to flip open. Now you can touch your screen. Now, just like your devices, you're gonna to wanna to keep those warm, your phone or your tablet, whichever one you plan on using. But the biggest thing you wanna make sure is warm are the batteries of your drone. Now, not even just drone batteries, but batteries in general. When they're exposed to either really cold or really hot temperatures, they normally have just different characteristics to them. And a lot of times, especially with drone batteries, if you're flying in very, very cold conditions, you're gonna have issues up there where your battery is gonna drain a lot quicker than normal. So the easiest thing to do, of course, is to carry your batteries in a warm pocket. So if you have a jacket pocket or a pants pocket that has a nice liner on the inside of it, or if it's uh, you know closer to your skin where it can maybe get a little bit of warmth, try to keep them in there before you fly. Just keep your batteries nice and warm. I also have my case here. So of course, if you guys are interested in this case, links are down below. But in that case, I do have that pocket right here above where you normally can put like your extra propellers and your tools. But what I did is I put a little warming heat pack in that top pocket. So when you're traveling around with the drone, it'll always stay at a pretty nice temperature because it is covered here too, it has a little layer of insulation. Then it has the heat pack right here at the very top. At least I know that my drone and the battery that's in the drone is at a nice temperature. The next piece of advice I would look into is checking what device you're gonna be using. Now I'm gonna be using my iPhone, which has a pretty good tolerance to cold and heat. I mean, not great. Uh, if you guys have seen my Tahoe video from last year here, I was using my iPad Air 2 and my iPad Air 2 went black. It blacked out. It was way too cold. Now, I'm not sure how necessary it's going to be, but what I've done here is put a little heat pack, the one I took from my drone case, put it right behind my phone, and then put my phone into its case here. I have a little bit of heat keeping my phone warm, so I'm not sure how much it's going to help, but I already had it out, so why not? Now for my next tip, if you'd like to take full manual control over your video and photos, as far as your exposure goes, you're gonna to wanna to get something like this, which are ND filters 
for your Mini 2. And the main reason why you might want to get some ND filters is because of the fact that you're shooting snow, it's very white, and you don't want to overexpose everything because if you do, you're going to blow everything out as far as the video and photos go. Now, it's a pretty calm day, not much winds at all, so I'm not too worried about hand launching and hand catching, but if you are very uncomfortable with doing that, try not to do it if you don't have to. I normally like to do it, but if you are finding yourself in a windy day, you might want to pick up something like this, which is just a little landing pad. There's definitely a lot of landing pads on the market. This one right here is one I really like, is from Moment, because it folds down super small. Uh, it's rigid and perfect size for the Mini or any other small compact drone like the Mavic Air 2. So for me, on a non-windy day like this, I'm just gonna hand launch and hand catch it. And if you guys want some more tutorials on hand launching, hand catching, make sure you guys check the links above as well as down below. I have a full tutorial about hand launching and hand catching your drone. Now for my next tip, the one thing you're wanna do when you get this thing up in the air for the first time is let it hover, let it sit there, see how the drone reacts to the environment. We have the Mini up in the air. First thing, like I said, let it sit there, see how it does. See if it's acting funny, if it's, you know, if it's kind of moving around, if you hear some weird noises, things like that. Let it sit there in the air before you just kind of take off and fly. You want to see how it reacts. I'd probably normally leave it up there for about, you know, 30 seconds or so. Make sure that your controls, your responses are exactly where you want them to be so that you feel like it's actually responding to your controls. Look at the app, see what the app is doing, seeing if there's anything weird that's showing up in the app. You always want to just take a little bit of precautions on there. You just don't want to get it up in the air flying right away. Now for our next tip, the thing I like to do is when I get into different elevations, so right now I'm in Tahoe, a lot higher elevations than I'm normally flying in San Diego, I will normally always do a compass calibration. Now sometimes your app might not say you might not need one. I just personally like doing it whenever I change locations this different. The elevation here is a lot different, so I will normally always do a compass calibration. Now for my next tip, the one thing you want to do too is because you're flying in colder weather, flight time is going to be limited. The cold weather is going to put a toll on the battery as far as how long it'll last up in the air. So it's definitely going to be not as long as a flight as you would be if you're flying on a nice sunny day. Now for my next tip, the one thing I like to do is keep phone charging on. Now go to the top three dots, click there, and then scroll down on control. And under control, you'll see remote controller, it says phone charging. I like to keep that on. Just like the drone battery, your phone battery will also not perform as well. So you'd also wanna make sure that your phone has enough charge in it. So I normally like to keep the phone charging on while I'm in flight. Now for my next tip, what I like to say is try to have a plan before you get up there. Now here I'm at one of the resorts up in North Star, and this is a place that I normally will always fly at. And the thing you want to do is have in mind what exactly you want to get up there before you start flying. You don't want to get up in the air and, you know, hit record and then just start free flying and then trying to discover too many things if you don't really have a plan because of the fact that your battery is so limited. Whenever I'm flying in the cold weather, what I like to do is when I get to about that 40 to 50% on my battery, I like to bring it in a lot closer, a lot closer to the point where I can really see it very close because I know of course the Mavic Mini is such a small drone that you're going to want to be able to have that closer by. That way uh, if anything does drop, if the battery levels do drop, you, you have a lot easier of a time flying it back when it's right next to you. Now once you bring it back in after your flight, you want to look at the drone itself. See if it got any condensation from the flight. See if there's anything that just seems out of the ordinary. Make sure there's not too much moisture because depending on when and you know how you're flying outside, it could have picked up a lot of moisture in the air. But as of right now, of course, you can see the sun came out. It's a pretty nice flight out there. So I wasn't too worried about any issues with the drone, but you always wanna bring it back in, look at the props, see if there's any issues with them, and just do a nice little overall check of your drone. And for my final tip is put another battery in there, get up and flying safely. For me, I'm from San Diego, so I don't get to see the snow that often. So whenever I can get to places like this, I definitely wanna take advantage of getting some aerial shots of you know the beautiful snow that just dumped it dumped up you know last week and i think it's gonna you know uh snow again towards the end of this week so unfortunately i don't think i have uh, in the forecast of getting any snow while i'm here right now within these next day or two but towards the end of the week i should be able to hopefully get something and if i do i'll be able to capture it with something like this 
Mini 2. Once again, huge thanks to our sponsor, Storyblocks. And there it is, guys. Just some tips to flying in some cold weather. I'm here up in Lake Tahoe. Definitely a beautiful, beautiful sight and beautiful place to be. As always, if you guys got some value from this video, a big like would be much appreciated. And also, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell to be notified when I post new videos. This is Aldrin Stasio with FlyPath.com. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.